Folks, we're going to keep the uh, we're going to keep the program going now, um, and I'm going to introduce our next speaker, uh, Mr. Todd Johnson, who is the Chief Revenue Officer of C Quadrant. Todd is one of the founding uh, partners of the company, um, and he uh, recently raised over a twenty million dollars for a cannabis farm and extraction facility. And Todd is going to tell you about Quadrant uh, C Quadrant LLC. Todd. Guys, welcome to the Money Show. Can you? How you doing? Yeah. Woo! All right. My name is Todd Johnson. I I am the actual Chief Revenue Officer and Co-Founder of, of C Quadrant. Um, I'm excited to kind of talk to you guys a little bit about us. We are we're a, a, a mega lab. We are actually an industrial extraction complex nestled in Salinas, right inside Monterey County. We're we're about a mile away from eight million square foot of canopy. So some of the largest most productive farms in the state and in my opinion this is probably the most important dirt in the country okay and um, I will I, I know that there's you know moderate levels of cannabis literacy in the room I'm gonna make sure that I sound a little condescending to some and perfectly sensible to others so we can all have a good conversation but in a nutshell what what extraction is is when the hemp plant is grown like a little bit like corn, big stalks. It's pulled out of the ground. It's modulized. It's sent by truck over to our facility, and then it's run through a first stage kind of mulching process that turns it into what would look like oil, like dark tarish oil, and that's crude. And then that crude is run through a distillation process with equipment you might see at a refinery, petroleum refinery. So think just like oil being refined to petroleum and then shipped to the gas station. We literally take that crude and process it into a honey syrup distillate that is CBD, 99% pure, or a powder form, which is 99% pure. And then that is sold off to manufacturers. So that would be sold to companies such as Procter & Gamble, Johnson & Johnson, Estee Lauder, and any of the other boutique firms that you're getting excited about that actually make CBD products. Now, I, I got into this space accidentally, right? My background is building companies in emerging markets when there's no brand leader. I've taken 24 companies up over 100 million. I worked with Google Venture for many years, a lot of their firms, and I, I, I don't even smoke. I'm the most boring pot guy in the state of California, but my kids are super proud, okay? <laughs> But um, how I got into this, about three years ago, I was starting a, a, a fintech company. I bumped into this great operator named Mike Gregory, and I funded my $100,000 in a wire. He showed up with his $100,000 in a bag, okay? And that's how he knew he was making a bunch of money. He's making multiple seven figures in distribution. And he's moving almost a million square foot of canopy and a bunch of oil all across the state of California. And we said we were on the wrong side of the P&L. And I don't know if you've heard this, but this thing's getting kind of big. So we decided to jump into it, and we've raised about $3 million. We started our first 58,600 square foot grow in Salinas to get ingratiate ourselves into that dirt. And that's how we got to know the group. This, that's best practice, SOPs all across. It's cross-sharing of genetics. Those are the top leaders. The largest farms in the state, the largest farms in the country are there, just a, about an hour from our capital. It's, it literally is. If you want to be in digital marketing, go to San Jose. If you want to be a stockbroker, go to New York. And if you want to be in cannabis, you go to Salinas, right? So we sold that. We made a bunch of money. We sold it at a profit. We did it again. We made a bunch of money, and we're holding on to it. And then we came, and this is our dream. We bought a 42,000 square foot, four-story, ready for this? Former food processing plant. It's FDA approved. So what that means is, even though most extraction facilities are in 3,000 square foot industrial warehouses with little equipment from ex-pot dealers from high school with little chemistry backgrounds, our, process, our facility is, getting, is already in stance to be understood and approved by the government when those state lines fall. So it's, it used to process fruits and vegetables. So anything you wipe on or put in your body, we need to be concerned about the structure that's processing those ingredients. Does that make sense? Okay, so initially we came into the space looking to be a THC extraction monster. That's what we came in here to do. Because most soccer moms are not going to be, you know, piping flour out of a water bong at the, at the you know, the Tupperware party, right? The, it's the oil that's changing things. It's the oil that's allowing them to, you know, in a more sophisticated way, imbibe. And it's the oil that's be, being used for medicine. So that's what we came here to do, to build the largest extraction facility for THC. Then this CBD thing happened. Now, CBD exploded. We bought this, we bought this property 
uh, a year and a half ago cash, five acres, and I'll show you more about, of it in a second. But CBD by itself, believe it or not, there is no brand winner in this space, okay? You cannot walk to anyone and ask them who the number one retailer is, who the number one delivery is, who the number one extraction place is, or who the greatest farm is. Nobody knows. There's no brand authority of any kind. But if you walk up to almost any human being and ask them, what do you think of CBD? They already go, CBD good, right? So CBD, CBG, CBA, these components derived from the hemp plant, not psychoactive, federally acceptable, have been accepted but primarily worldwide as like a wonderful thing. And so now everybody's getting into the market. So immediately we changed, we've spent about a million three on engineering developing our scaled equipment to get in prepared stands to be the number one CBD extraction authority, right? So again, to get you an idea what that looks like, just to kind of put it in perspective, when the CBD plant shows up, it shows up in this plant and it comes in and we stage it to, to crude, then we stage it to a honey syrup and we sell that single liter of honey syrup, which is distillate, for 6500 okay? And typically, um, that money exchanges hands within 72 hours. So, and right now we have so much product demand. I was actually asked earlier today, do you think there's, no, there's too much product and not enough you know, consumption? And I'll give you this, this is my fist. This is about, this represents about how much CBD is actually being produced right now. And in the next couple of years, this room will be the demand. In about another 10 to 15 years, this casino will be the demand. Every single thing that you eat, wipe on you, or drink, every company out there right now has research or is moving towards having a CBD tangent to their product line, and they're all coming exactly at once. I mean, so it is literally clamoring for, they're clamoring for it now. Now, we went after scale. Let me explain to you the value systems of scale. A standard, uh, again, a standard extraction facility might fit in this room. That would be the, about the normal size. The distillation machines would be something that you would dolly in. The degasser is the size of a microwave, okay? And when you have a single unit in the back, you have two individuals managing that unit to do the distillation process. My distillation unit is the size of a train. It's 15,000 square foot wide and long. It's two stories tall. Two individuals manage that. So human labor and then the production value of that machine is so violently offset that my, my earning economics are way up. My cost economics are way down. The second issue with scale uh, that was strategically important to us is that if you have nine or ten small units sitting in a box that you're all distilling from, you're going to have variance, 98.7% pure, 97.6% pure, 96.3%. Take all those bottles, you put them in a single case and send off to Avon, the product is all up and down and no dependability, so the product efficacy is off base. When all of it's done in a single vat, it comes out, it comes out pure and it comes out with strong product efficacy. So scale was important to us. Scale, we, we moved ourselves into Salinas because that's the most important dirt. We built scale not because we're selfish or greedy, but because it makes sense. We got an FDA approved building because we're preparing ourselves for the future, right? So I'm gonna go into the standard extraction process, but I'm definitely not gonna talk chemistry today. I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna say CO2 extraction. There you go, that was chemistry, okay? Everybody feel better? Okay, but you should know this. Because we can actually extract oil using our equipment and process so efficiently, we can sell it at a profit to other manufacturers for less money than they can actually make it. So this, because of scale, allows all of the manufacturers in their area to cease being our competition and now become sales prospects. Because of the volume and discount that we can provide, all the Fortune top companies become prospects. There isn't any buyer that gives us any lack of confidence. So whether that be you know, Coca-Cola bottling or Procter & Gamble, any of them can be satisfied. When, when Sequad is completely equipped, it will be able to generate a roughly 140,000 kilos of isolate a month, roughly 100,000 liters of distillate a month, making it one of the top 12 megalabs of its kind um, anywhere on the western seaboard. Now, the other thing that we can do is that the quality of the, of, the, of the biomass that goes into the machine determines the quality of the end game. And so many times the farmer's best practices are low practices, and they come with contaminants. They come with mites, or they come with pesticides, or something of that sort. When the smaller labs run it through the distillation and find it to be dirty distillate at the end, they have to either throw it away or sell it at a discount. 
But because of, our, because of the way we use our, our solution, we can actually do what's called remediate, which means we can take it right back through the system and we can export all of those outside agents and bring it back to pure. So this means that any trim, any biomass becomes a prospect to us. So because of scale, we can grab anything. Because of scale, we can sell to anyone. Because of scale, we can protect our product, right? Well, not yet, but I had a lot of them ask me so far because we're already profitable, right? Um, as a matter of fact, we'll, if we don't get more handsome or tall, we'll make $30 million net and distribute that to our investors right now. Can I give me a loud applause? Yeah, yeah. Woo okay, but believe it or not, I'm only at 2.3% of my capacity, and that's the best part. Okay, so look at the size over here, the equipment on the left-hand side. These are distillation units that you can dolly in over the top right corner. That's my machine. That's two stories tall, 15,000 square feet back. And this is just for picture purposes, put in perspective. On the bottom left is a degasser. This is to take the methane, ethanol out of the tar. On the right is the size of a bus. Okay, so again, we have this incredible facility and we're in this great dirt. Um, we've been selling for a year before we ever went live, so we built this huge girth of potential biz buying prospects, but the helm is run by individuals who have real PhDs who've been doing scale extraction for seven years from Canada, Colorado, Oregon, and California. Um, we have spent a million three on the design of our equipment. Soma Scientific was kind of attached to our brainstem. This is the, this is the incursion group that actually helped educate some of the bigger groups here in the country. We helped them work with us in developing our, our personal equipment. Our senior leadership uh, used to run logistics for Cardinal for 14 years, eight years in developing hubs with one million component SKUs, three million square foot facilities. I mean, so every single member of our family is best from logistics, from, from extraction, from equipment development, from brain science to actually extraction formulas itself. But the best part of us is that we've been selling this thing for six years. So building a big building and not being able to sell what you can produce is kind of useless. You know, so before we had our first farm, we were moving a million square foot of canopy. Then we had 58,000 square foot. Right now we can move way more than we can produce and we can produce a lot. So ultimately, this, this is my favorite part, to be honest with you. Um, we, went, we got our, our production up to par about oh, six weeks ago, right? We went live. And we're, in about another week, we'll have our provincial license for THC production actually in Salinas. So we moved our equipment to our license facility in Santa Ana just to start production, just to get the gravel through the dock. We made our first 300,000. We just signed our first of seven contracts. We're up to $2 million a month in net earn as of June 1st. Um, and we're stacking pennies. What's been happening is I built the whole thing with the money we raised. We own our dirt. We own the building. We own the equipment. We don't, we're paying our bills. We're profitable already. But just picture this, okay? This is, my, this is what keeps me up at night. A barrel of crude is about 300,000. Are you with me? I can chew through a barrel of crude and turn it into 211 liters of distillate at 6,500 per. Okay? So right there, I can, I can actually, when I do two barrels a day, I can, I can generate about $1.7 million a day in income in 72 hours, and half of that's cost. So the rest of it's money. With 20 business days, right now my run rate on my current equipment is about $12 million net in my facility. But I have to buy that biomass up front. I have to write a check to buy that biomass to throw it through the front of the reader and then get it out the back. So when I first started, it was like, here's 30 grand in my, in my sock drawer. I buy out and got, get liters of, of crude, put it through the machine, process it to crude, turn that into 60 grand, pay my bills, put 50 grand in and keep flipping pennies. You see what I'm saying? So it's been a penny flipping business to get it up to six or 700,000 in net. So here I am, I'm raising 10 million now for only one purpose and there's no other purpose for it and that's to buy crude. I just want to buy as much crude as this machine can earn so I can just turn it into money and distribute it every quarter. Once I'm up to 12 million a month and I just use the capacity, believe it or not, I'm still only one-tenth of my total capacity. I'm only using 5,000 of my square footage of my 42, which means that I can grow 10 more times. So our plan is simply to increase the actual biomass production to the front, double that money in the back, put some up on the table to distribute to our investors and take the rest to parlay that into more equipment acquisition and more, and more biomass. Um, as we've been doing this, right, we've been invited right now to come down to Santa Ana. There's a 60,000 square foot facility that would like us to come down after we get to about midpoint in our production at Sequad Salinas. And we've also been invited to come out to Boston. We've been invited to come to Florida. We've been invited to, come, you know, to go to Costa Rica. So there's all kinds of great opportunities. But we, we believe in just kind of digesting what we've bitten off.
right? Whoops. So ultimately, right now, what, what we are is we're an industrial extract complex, again. So what that means is we're scaled. Our, scaled. our scaled posture was designed to do several things. Allow us to be able to remediate so we could buy any type of trim. Allow us to be able to affordably produce our product and sell it at a profit to other manufacturers so we could be a wholesaler support and not see them as competition but see them as partners. To be able to sell to all the tall companies, to be able to sell to the small companies, and to be able to provide product eff efficacy. In other words, to make sure that we have a dependable, consistent product for the marketplace. Uh, we've done that. We are definitely an industry partner. We have worked our way through our network. We know our neighborhood very well. We've gotten to know the farms, the extractors, the retailers, and the, and the pharmaceutical firms that are coming after this product big time, not only in our, in our state, but I've gone from Macedonia to Germany, and I, from Panama to Costa Rica, I've met them all, and we're getting ready to pack this place full of hemp. Um, we have, so we have access to all the trim we'd ever want. Uh, we're using one-tenth of our capacity. That's all the equipment we have on hand. But equipment's just like TVs. We literally, the type of equipment that we have is, is hardware. It's plug and play because our facility is completely redressed and just needs to be put in there. But we don't need money for that. All we need money is for the biomass because it makes a lot of money, a lot of money. And that money can be parlayed into more equipment, which can make more money, which can be parlayed into more equipment, right? Um, I have been, again, I've been asked if we're public. We're not. We're a privately held company. Uh, we do distributions on a quarterly basis. Have we been invited to go public? Have we been invited to jump into other public place? Absolutely. We get calls like that and people knocking on the door constantly because they like to have access to our revenues and our posture. But right now, to be honest with you, we're just staying stalwart about just making money for our investors, building this thing up until it's right close to fr fruition, and then we'll look up over, over the hill at that time, right? So um, we're, I'm in booth 516. If there's anybody in here that would like to come meet me or talk to, talk to us about this more, you're welcome to. But in the meantime, I've got five minutes so I can open up for questions. How's that? Yeah, go for it. Sure. Anybody brings their badge over to me, I'll make sure that you can have the presentation, can have any variables you want, anything you'd like to have access to, I'll, I'll inundate you. <laughs> Absolutely. What? Oh, well, we actually use multiple ones. There's different versions of the end game, of the end product, but whether it be full spectrum, isolate, distillate, there are very, there are variances in the process. But our primary, our primary method right now is a CO2 process. But we are actually using CO2 methane. We have quite a few uh, ethanol. Excuse me. We have quite a few different ways of actually getting this stuff done. And if you want to know the science behind what we do, you can just come to me, and I'll make sure I get you a bunch of documents on that. Yeah. What's the question? Oh, right now it's all day long 80-20, right? So we came in here with the idea of 80% THC, 20% CBD. Right now our primary game plan is 80% CBD. We are looking at our next facility to be 100% CBD, pharmaceutical grade. So that's our net, but that one's funded already. We already raised 60 million for that. So that's coming right now around the corner, yeah. Next question? Yes. What's the uh, cost per gram for production? Yeah. We're like in the $2.40 range, $2.60 range. Uh, we can actually sell it for $5 and still make a profit. And there's production costs out there, standard about seven. Yeah. That's great. I got my another 90 seconds. Yeah. Are you hiring? <laughs> yeah. I will be as I raise more money. And you, I actually, believe it or not, have about nine of my investors working for me right now. All right. And all my projects, they get so excited and they're retired. They come up and they just want to be a part of it. And they go, that's, you ever seen a pot farm the size of Costco? It's a lot of fun. Yeah. And what a, what a great question. 99% of our biomass is domestic biomass right here from the United States. We have sourced it from Macedonia all the way to South America. I do bring crude in from Canada, Colorado, Washington, Oregon, Kentucky, North Carolina. I have it everywhere. And California. So, yeah, I can, bring, I can bring biomass in the form of crude from almost anywhere. I can bring biomass by truck from almost anywhere. Uh, the, the THC laden plant, pot, cannabis, it has to, it, it, its shoulders range from the sea to the end of California, right? It can't go across state lines. So I can't buy the, when I extract, I have to do only California cannabis. That's, that's great questions. So I think I might have nine seconds. Does anybody have a really fast one? Oh, I got 39 seconds. I can answer a great question in 39 seconds. Anybody else? You give me money. 
<laughs> That's a great question. You come to my booth, I'll scan, you'll have the, I, we have a, a financial firm by the name of Torch Securities that manages all of our fundraising. You come and say you're interested, what they'll do is they'll give you the documents, they'll give you all the due diligence, you'll be able to see what I'm saying in the actual black and white. And if anybody here would like to make a more sizable investment and in what's important to you is to come visit the place, then you come see me and we'll take you on a tour of, of everything we've got. If you've got all day, I'll take in a tour of, of pot farms and, as, and a C quadrant and when you're done, you won't sleep for a month. You really want. Yeah, I've been in a straight Red Bull diet for about a year. It's pretty exciting. Well, guys, thank you so much for this time with me. Thank you so much.